Galvanise the Chemical Brothers on XFM. This is Josh Widdicombe, Saturday morning. Good morning, good morning. Producer Dave this week. Morning. How are you? All right, thank you. How are good. you? Good. Good. Neil's away because he's, um, he's best manning. I know. I didn't realise that until you just told me. And you, you got, you weren't told you, you got kind of nervous for him. Yeah, I did, yeah, because it was one of those terrifying days of my life. Did you, did it go down all right? Yeah, yeah, it was all right. I got a clip of Jason Donovan for mine, so it worked you did, quite well. You were, you were best man for Jason Donovan? No, I wasn't. I wish. I wish I was best man for... I wish you had been. No, my, the, the friend that I was best man for mm. was a big Neighbours fan when he was younger, so I got a clip from Jason Donovan wishing him a happy Amazing. wedding. So that's the kind of strings you can pull. That's how you do it. Man. That's how you do it. Neil's currently going, I can't believe... I missed out on this chance. <laughs> I, I, I wonder if Neil... If Neil is listening, then um, I don't think he's taking his best manning seriously. <laughs> no, no, the little earpiece. Yeah. In the church. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure that was the right track to play at that point. <laughs> I, um... Well, that, good luck to Neil, you know. Yeah. I'm not saying that x Film should come first, but it's disappointing that he's put best manning before his job. I'm sure he could have done both. Duly noted. Yeah, he could have done both, couldn't he? he could yeah. Have. We could have done it. We could have done the show live from um, <laughs> from the registry office. Yeah. Josh Widdicombe, XFM. Still joined. Well, I say still joined by producer Dave. It's only sixteen minutes in. It would be. Uh, I'll be here for the whole show, Josh. Or us. Yeah. You know, I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, uh, it obviously will because I don't know how to work the machinery. <laughs> it'd be an interesting I mean, show, wouldn't it? <laughs> it'd be disastrous. <laughs> It would just be, it's just be here coming out, man, by the Pixies played repeatedly, <laughs> as I just repeatedly clicked on it. Um, there's, uh, there's various things I want to talk about this morning, Dave. Uh, so, so, and you'll, uh, you'll be privy to them for the whole show, as you've already Good. discussed. Looking um, forward to it. Number one, um, well, it's, it's from last week. We had a subject last week that, um, seemed to go down so well with, with I was going to say viewers, I always say that, is listeners. It's listeners, yeah. But I, I like to think that they're looking at a picture of me and you. At the time, but while they're watching. Or whilst they're listening, just staring at the radio. Just staring, yeah, staring, staring at, at the radio. Don't look away from the radio. <laughs> yeah, that's how I hope. Or just cupping their ear towards the radio. <laughs> um, well, I, whereas in actual fact, they're probably walking around their kitchen going, I probably won't be even, you know, one more song and then I'll go out. I doubt they're barely listening to this, actually. Uh, just hello. catching the odd word. Yeah, can you hear us? Hello? <laughs> hello? 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 Eight three nine three six. If you uh, <laughs> if you're listening, <laughs> that would be that would be the uh, we shouldn't do that. The most desperate <laughs> text in ever. Are you listening? <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> anyway, right. Last week we did a text in, which was um, could anyone come and you know just help us? Uh, it was um, which was um, things you've heard on a Tannoy or loudspeaker system because of it, obviously that's a brand name Tannoy. We're aware of that. Is it? Yeah, I went through this last week, Dave, with Neil. Sorry, I missed this one. <laughs> I wasn't listening last week. I didn't text him. <laughs> um, and uh, it went so well. The, uh, we're rolling it over. Anything, just the best things, anything you've heard said over a loudspeaker announced Tannoy. Whatever you want, really. Just just kind of around the... Just Tannoy. Okay. Enjoy. Um, uh, so, uh, th there's that. And the, the, but the thing I actually want to talk about this week is I got... Um, I was thinking this week about the hurricanes. <laughs> Uh, not not uh, the weather phenomena, the uh, yeah. children's TV show from the 90s. Yes. Um, for anyone that doesn't remember it, it was a, um, a show based around a football team um, who uh, played in the World Soccer League. And the reason I know that is I, I've, I've this week watched the um, title sequence on, um, on YouTube. Did you? And uh, one of my issues with the Hurricanes was um, that um, there was a player that played in bare feet. I remember. Yeah, which isn't actually allowed in football because it would be a health and safety issue. <laughs> uh, and that was always my issue. It's kind of stuck with me for 20 years. And I, I wanted to kind of think about, have other people got these, any kind of issues you've got with children's TV shows from when you're a kid that didn't make sense? Oh. The other one I've got is, it was, I don't know how the Chuckle Brothers kept getting loans to start new businesses. Cause <laughs> <laughs> Every business would go badly. You'd think the bank would go, these guys are a write-off. <laughs> Josh Whittaker. Podcast. XFM. Blink 182 on XFM. And, uh, Dave, that's quite a kind of, um... I, I, I'm obsessed with track endings now, since right. I started doing the radio. And I, I thought it was quite a harsh ending. You, you went straight you went straight into the, the music that we talk over. It always felt like... We didn't really show Blink-182 the respect they deserve. Sorry, I just thought yeah, I'd, no, I'd bring in some punctuation to the audio. Yeah. <laughs> it was. It was very clear. It was like, it's like you've gone, I think that's enough for Blink-182. <laughs> 
We all know the 90s happened. Let's move on. Yeah, it was a repeat to fade. Everyone knew what was going to happen next. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're already. We know who he's blaming. Uh, <laughs> come on, mate. Move on. <laughs> uh, I am... Um, now, we, we, we were talking about... Uh, thing, I, I did say we're doing a rollover of uh, things you've heard in a town. I, I didn't give any examples, so I feel like I should uh, give you a couple of examples to so know the kind of thing uh, we are looking for. Um, now... Row in Clapham, um, as 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 a tweet. Well, we don't. I don't even know the me, the me, the medium. I was going to say the message, the medium <laughs> of the message. I just stuttered so badly on the radio that I think that was probably right. the worst bit of broadcasting I've ever done. The me, 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 me medium. Pretend it didn't happen. <laughs> 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 you got it as well. Pretend it didn't. It's like it's like we've got one of those effects on our voices. <laughs> <laughs> like we've got one of those old wrapping boxes or whatever. Right, Rowan Clapham, let, let's, let, let's, let's nail this, Dave. I was on a, an escalator at London Bridge Station, tube station, when it came over the speaker. Can the passenger, ple- being violently sick, on the Northern Line platform, please seek a member of staff for assistance? <laughs> I don't think... I don't think... I think... To say that it, an example of the horse has already bolted in that... Yeah. I, I don't know what a member of staff is going to achieve there. No. Uh, um, that's the kind of thing. Uh, also, uh, Karen, Karen Ratcliffe, um, I heard on a local metro. What's that? Is that... Is that a, I don't even know what a local metro is. Uh, a metro is the tram system in Manchester, Josh. Oh, it is, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You northerners. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an overground underground. It's an overground underground, yeah. yeah. No, I know. It links Chalton to the main... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. It does link Chawton to the main heart of the city. Yeah, it's now branching out towards the airport, you'll be pleased to know. Is it? Yeah. And it goes to Altrincham, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Yeah. God, Eccles. this is the most boring conversation I've ever had. If only we'd started on this one, that would have been a lot more helpful. <laughs> Although, anyone listening on XFM Manchester has been lapping up the last 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Tell us something we don't know, that's what yeah. they're saying. <laughs> that's our next text in, where have you gone on the metro? <laughs> <laughs> I heard on a local metro which is a tram system, yeah. the driver say uh, he needed to update us on why we're stuck, but he didn't know. <laughs> now, uh, that basically undermines Manchester's metro system straight away. Yeah. I mean, thank God we've got the tube in London. Exactly, yeah. Theory, mate. Josh Widdicombe. XFM. A ton of love, editors, on XFM. I gave that a very, very kind of serious... Yeah, that's the, the fe- feeling it deserved. Quite a serious band. Quite a serious oh, band. Man. Yeah, cheer up, guys. I- <laughs> <laughs> Might never happen. <laughs> uh, we will be coming to more of your texts and tweets uh, later on. Before that, uh, I was talking to um, the comedian Matthew Crosby this week, who, and he told me he feels that the show lacks a kind of celebrity star quality. So uh, he's trying to remedy that. Uh, hello, Matthew. Hello, Josh. How are you doing? Very good, very good. You're not remedying it with your own star quality. No, no, I'm not. Well, I am. I'm going to be your gateway into the world of show business. Uh, uh, not, not because, not because I hobnob with the stars directly. I would love to, but <laughs> I, I don't. I don't have Groucho membership, and I'm banned from Stringfellows. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but we'll, I would, we'll come I'd, to that. We'll come to that. We'll come to that. In a, That'll be in a, in a separate, very special episode of the Josh Whitaker show. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm going to uh, I'm going to read to you some sections from my favourite uh, celebrity autobiographies. <laughs> okay. Who are, who, to give me an, uh, give me an would, idea. I mean, who's, uh, your, who's your guest this week? Who's your guest this week? Who's my guest? James Acaster. Yeah. James Acaster. Okay, now, obviously, a top celebrity, but he's not exactly... I mean, he's B-list. Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> I think gonna that's read, very kind, I'm, Matthew. I'm going to read to you. I mean, he would be he would be in the heat spotted section, but he wouldn't be in what are they wearing? You know, what are they? <laughs> would be sort of. He's not quite made the leap. No. However, the the star of your biography I'm going to be uh, reading today is a bona fide, a bona fide a lister. Yeah, uh, Shane Ritchie. Shane Ritchie. Yeah, what, now what? Shane Ritchie. I, I'm going to read it from Shane Ritchie. Um, what he calls the story so far. Uh, now he wrote this. He wrote this a good few years ago, and he's not written another one. Um, so I think it may have been slightly preemptive to call it story so far. But actually, this has got one of the best titles of a celebrity autobiography um, I've ever heard. Do you want uh, to hazard a guess as to what it might be called? Um, uh, Shay, um, no, I don't know. I mean, I mean Shane. It might there. be called Shane. Shane. Yeah. Is that my guess? No Shane. Shane. It could have been no Shane, no gain. It could have been that. <laughs> yeah. Is it um, Strike It Richie? No. Oh, Strike It Richie. No, it's... 
If anything, it's better than that. It's rags oh. to Richie. Oh. Rags to Richie. Rags to Richie. I mean, he could it's have like gone for a new bag, but about it's, a, it's wealth there. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's not. He's, got, he's bragging from the fact he used to dress in rags, and now he's changed his name. That's all he's done. <laughs> so, uh, what, what, real... what will you be reading from this uh, this memoir? Well, uh, there's, there's so many. The thing about this is it's one of my favourite books of all time, Rags to Richie. <laughs> there are so many good stories. There are fantastic stories. There, uh, there's, the, there's the time he um, he wooed uh, Colleen, which is obviously it turned out to be his wife later on, by um, breaking up little bits of a plastic fork and spitting them out like they were his teeth. <laughs> Not to be reading that section. There's a great there's a great paragraph dedicated to the the question he gets. Oh, he always gets asked, "Are you really called Shane?" The answer: <laughs> Yes, he is really called Shane. Um, but as a little uh, uh, before I get into the main meat of it, as a little sort of uh, aperitif. Um, I'm going to read a section from chapter eight, which is now he's got some great chapter titles. He's not just uh, not just rags to riches is a great title for the book. This is the title of chapter eight. This is Bobby Ball, my hero, and he's threatening to break my legs. <laughs> I'm interested. Yes, I'm interested. I'm sold. Bobby so Ball, my hero. Going, wow. He, yeah, his hero. He talks about going to a party at the Nolans. Hmm. Um, and imagine how this is this is what he says imagine how i felt then after two weeks in bournemouth he'd been doing summer season in bournemouth imagine how i felt then after two weeks in bournemouth to find myself at a party drinking alongside not only cannon and ball but also the grumbleweeds brian <laughs> Connolly, bobby davro russ abbott and keith harris <laughs> i can imagine how he felt depressed <laughs> <laughs> no quite the opposite seeing all the quite depressed but for a different reason seeing all the famous people inside i panicked i said to sally his then wife who was going to um dump for colleen <laughs> i can't have been there i'm nobody uh, oh. so sad so painful we've all been in that situation we've all been in that situation what's when the grumble weeds are kicking around what else are you gonna think <laughs> exactly how else are you gonna you know you can only a dream of, of, of joining them in the stratosphere of, of show business so, so, so what, what's your main excerpt like then the section I'm going to read, we'll get straight to it, is when he played Peter Pan. Now, he'd, um, <laughs> he'd fallen out of love with the TV world, so he resorted to Panto. <laughs> Unfortunately, because he was so depressed, uh, as he says here, I was still doing late-night club shows, travelling back at night, stopping at 24-hour garages, and eating the usual diet of Pringles, Ginster's Cornish Passy and a Fab Lolly, all washed down with a Diet Coke. I was struggling. I had no real incentive other than Panto, which wasn't enough. However... Luckily enough, he meets his hero, Robin Williams. Now, wow. you think he meets him at a showbiz party. What actually happens is he finds out Robin Williams is going to appear on the Jonathan Ross show and gets sick to see the Jonathan Ross show. <laughs> so um, that's his way he manages to meet Robin Williams. So he goes to meet Robin Williams, and Robin Williams says to him, you're going to play Peter Pan. Are you going to fly? He says, I am. Robin Williams says, it's a really bad idea. You're, mate, you're way too fat. <laughs> He says, he says, how much do you weigh? He says, I weigh 15 and a half stone. He goes, right, that's going to be that's gonna be a problem. And it turned out it was. Okay, here we go. When the opening night came, I was fired up. John's idea, that's his manager, was that I would be on a wire and strapped into a harness and the show would open with me leaping off the dress circle, flying through the air and landing on the stage. There was a huge build-up with dramatic music and then suddenly the searchlight shot around the theatre in a figure of eight while 1,200 excited, paying punters shouted, Where's Peter Pan? When the lights hit me on the edge of the dress circle, circle, I shouted, Here I am, everyone! And that was my cue to go. Unfortunately, with all the excitement, my adrenaline was pumping, so instead of stepping off, as I'd been instructed, I took a running jump. This totally threw the guys with the ropes and they couldn't hold me. So instead of flying gracefully across the stage, I plummeted six feet. All of a sudden, there are kids and parents screaming at this 15 and a half stone bloke. <laughs> As in, dressed in tights, coming hurtling towards them. I dangled there for what seemed like hours in absolute agony. At that point, with my nuts squashed around my throat, I suddenly knew exactly why a girl always played Peter Pan. <laughs> this is the saddest part. When they finally got me airborne again, the next idea was for me to hover across the stalls and throw handfuls of glitter out as I flew past. It was a lovely idea and looked really magical when we practiced it in rehearsals. The only difference was, on the opening night, I had 400 kids staring up at me. The glitter fell like sand. So in what was supposed to be a really dramatic moment, all I could hear was 400 kids crying, Mummy, I've got glitter in my eyes. I can't see anything. And it hurts. Things went from bad to worse. Because of the momentum, I crashed, landed headfirst into the MGMF forest at the back of the stage. I hit it so hard, I broke my nose. I so he writes... He writes a letter to Robin Williams. He he sends him uh, he sends him some photos of the night, 
And Robin Williams sends him some pictures. I sent him a letter back saying, I hope your nuts held up. <laughs> I think... Shane's final missive, if only he knew. <laughs> I think we can all agree, Matthew. That you have uh, you have sprinkled stardust on the show this morning. <laughs> <laughs> it was an absolute pleasure. Josh Whittaker, Podcast XFM. Going back to the Beastie Boys. I mean, that is not an end to a song. That's totally unacceptable. Do they not consider the DJ? <laughs> Me and Dave were looking at each other there as if to go, is this still going? <laughs> I mean, we're all for ripping up the rule book, but there comes a point when <laughs> someone's got to do a job, guys. <laughs> First break your VW signs, and now that unbelievable rebellion from the Beastie Boys. I am um, now before that Matthew Crosby, who will be back next week. I don't know how he's going to top Shane Ritchie. No. One of the things we are talking about though this week is um is uh, faction accuracies that annoyed you uh, from children's TV shows that have kind of stuck in your and uh, craw, and that now you can get them off your chest based on my annoyance with um the hurricane the, the player from the Hurricanes playing without football boots. Unacceptable. Um, not allowed. We've, uh, we've established this. It's, it's not within yeah. FA guidelines. Um, Sh- Shani in, uh, in Surrey um, th- has uh, tweeted it, texted in, The way Postman Pat is a postman in a village of around 12 people, but now not only needs a helicopter, but can also fly it. <laughs> now, this is news to me. I, yeah. I didn't know that Postman Pat had a helicopter. No, it's a recent development, I think. So what does he get up to? I mean, he's not Noel Edmonds. I mean... <laughs> I mean, I've not watched it in years. Thank God, in many ways. Yeah. But, uh, so he flies a helicopter now. It seems so, yeah. Unbelievable. I mean, Greendale. You don't need that. I, although, I, I would say to Sharni, she not only needs a helicopter, but can also fly it. I mean, it'd be much worse if he had a helicopter that he couldn't fly. That'd be a terrible plot line, wouldn't terrible it? Terrible plot line where <laughs> Postman Pat's invested his... Uh... She's always in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, why have that helicopter one day? One day. <laughs> Uh, Izzy in London, I introduced my flatmate to the Clangers last night, as he'd never heard of them, and it suddenly occurred to me, this show has taught children nothing. They lived on the moon, open brackets, not possible, close brackets. (laughs) (laughs) I know. (laughs) And spoken whistles. I don't think it was meant to be educational. No. It's not zigzag. I I don't... don't. (laughs) They weren't showing it in schools. Also, I wonder why Izzy has introduced a flatmate to the Clangers. Yeah. In 2013. Oh, and, and, and that point gone, wait a minute, this isn't educational at all. I was trying to teach my flatmate about how the world works. Josh Widdicombe. Podcast XFM. Black Keys, Little Black Submarines. This is Josh Widdicombe on XFM. Joined again for the final hour. He was away last week, but he's back. Mr. James Acaster. Big time. How are you? Pretty good. How are you, Josh? Good. Got a bit of a cold. You've got a bit so of So in case anyone wonders why I'm a bit bassier this week. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was not, thinking, because someone turned up the treble on James' yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um Since I last saw you, you've um, lost the Foster's Award. Yep. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a yearly tradition. Every year I go there, deliberately lose, like a like, uh, come back. Two so years. you have yet another scrape, is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was trying. If I won, it would have been okay. inconsistent with my Congratulations character. on nomination. Yeah, very, very well. Much, mate. Very well deserved, very well achieved. <laughs> you know? <laughs> don't even know what that means. I don't know what it means. Uh, but well done. Well, we're, we're, one of the things we'll talk about this morning, James, is um, children's TV shows, which has kind of branched off. I've since found out now that. Um, Dave was on a children's TV show, producer Dave. I was. What? what? Get Pizza. your own back? No, it wasn't. It was uh, a programme, it was a cooking programme on a Saturday afternoon on ITV called Flantastic. <laughs> That's <laughs> it not purely, a it, it was. purely Flans? It wasn't, no, no. I, I had to dress up as Prince Philip. I, I'm not sure, what, I'm still not sure why. Are you sure this Prince wasn't a dream? No, <laughs> it's actually happened. What was the outfit for Prince Philip? Uh, it was just a, a, just a smart suit, I think. With, with <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I There's, not, there's nothing says so Prince Philip like a smart <laughs> suit. <laughs> Wait a minute, is this theme? Everyone's come as Prince yeah. Philip. <laughs> Amazing. Were you being mildly racist? Did you really push it home? Or? No, I wasn't. No, no. I, so what, what did you have to do? I had to make egg mayonnaise crowns <laughs> with uh, someone called Jed, who ended up being on Coronation Street as a bit part actor a few years later. But it was good. It, 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 I think <laughs> I was only about... slam there. Yeah. <laughs> bit part. <laughs> I think I was the Coronation Street's going, he's now one of the few remaining cast members. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in, in one episode he played Prince Philip, I believe, as a, <laughs> as a, 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 a funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Why are uh, you yes. making crowns? Because you're Prince Philip. 
Uh, yeah, well, that, that's what I figured out later on, yeah, but I, I, I think that was just a happy coincidence. I, th- all, all, I wasn't actually making them, uh, the presenter was, and I just kind of had to pretend I knew what I was doing with him. I was ten. I don't understand what this is. You were t- no. So what happens? You, so you, what's the flan thing? What's that got to do with it? <laughs> The, it's just a type of food, isn't it? So I'm aware of that. I'm yeah. not discussing what a flan is. What I'm saying, <laughs> <laughs> you know, come on, I've got a degree. Let's, uh, <laughs> how, does, how does it work in the program? Uh, it didn't really, actually. Come to think of it, it was just it was just a kids' cooking program yeah. called Flantastic. There was the actions as well. You roll your hands for the flan, then punch the air for the tastic. So oh, Flantastic. Okay. <laughs> I was, like that. For people at home, it's just on the action. Yeah, <laughs> I've just done it. It's mostly for us. Did it? Roll the hands and so, punch the air. Yeah. La- last question uh, on this is: uh, How did you get on it? Uh, they came round to our primary school, and uh, they obviously just saw me and went, S- "That's Stop. Prince Philip in the making." Uh, there was a quick question: Why is that kid wearing a suit? <laughs> Everyone else is in different uniforms. He's got a suit over there. He's being mildly racist. Making egg mayonnaise crowns. <laughs> Light bulb. <laughs> He's perfect. Incredible. I saw a food, weird food thing. I saw a kids' program in Amsterdam when I was there about six months ago where I watched uh, a room full of children count down from 20 before the presenter tried his first ever pickled onion. <laughs> which is the most... Ad- and he quite liked it. It was the most anti... 20. <laughs> 20 as well. Like 10 or long. 5... <laughs> Not twenty. Do you, reckon, do, you reckon, do you reckon the show was running short? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the director at the side doing that finger thing. Can't count down. Um, Surely yeah. during that countdown, your mind wanders anyway. By, by fifteen, you're like, I don't care about him eating this onion. I wonder. I've got to pay that bill next week. You start feeling other stuff, and then at the end, oh yeah, you, he's eating. You the come end. back in around about seven, wouldn't you? Seven, yeah, yeah. Snap. All seven, six. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, oh, it's looking like nervous it. again. <laughs> no, uh, Tom. Mm-hmm. Uh, what came up on the children's TV? Is you said you look you, you typed children's television into your phone. Is this what happened? Yeah. Well, occasionally, if you, if we're talking about a subject, I've th- things I've written down in mm. the past years of my pointless life, and I came up with a kids' TV program which I've so, written. So, do notes. you remember writing this into your phone? No idea. So, just read it. What has it got a time and a date? <laughs> yeah, twelfth of August. Fantastic. Oh God, twelfth of August, <laughs> two thousand twelve. This was mid Edinburgh. <laughs> <laughs> if ever I'd lost faith in my solo show, it's when I'm writing ideas for kids' TV shows. <laughs> So if you get a nominatable show like Acast and you don't write stuff like this. <laughs> no, we, we, we write our acceptance speeches, then burn them the next day. <laughs> so, at what so, time did you write 391 this? 391 days ago, I wrote What t- Does it say what time you wrote it? Oh, 3.47am. <laughs> <laughs> it's like kebab in hand. <laughs> Just having read a three star from Shortle. <laughs> right, this is, this is it, yeah. Um, it I wrote, re, kids TV programme. That's not less needless. <laughs> it's nice myself. Uh, a kids programme <laughs> about a teenager who plays for a premiership team while still at school, a la Rooney Everton. <laughs> <laughs> this is my idea. It's yet to go anywhere, but um, if anyone wants to buy it off me... It's not the whole like, premise. I thought it was going to be more. Literally it, yeah. So, 15-year-old kid plays for <laughs> plays Wigan. Or plays for Wigan, and he's also has to it. juggle that with his homework. <laughs> it's exactly it, yeah, and it's a cup final, and he's got, you know, he's got an he's essay got in. Sat. And he's just before they go on, he's finishing his work. <laughs> Take yeah, it, yeah, actually. I might use that. Yeah, um, and you've said it on this show, so I own the copyright. Uh, <laughs> Josh Whittaker. Uh, James Acaster back with a classic scrape. Oh, lovely music for it. <laughs> Very nice. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting. We didn't, we didn't run through what the music was going to be. As soon as it came in, I was like, Bed. Yeah, I'm about to tell a scrape. <laughs> so, this. so, James Acaster, it's slow reggae. Yeah, it's kind of. <laughs> <laughs> what I think of you is what I think of. Yeah, this is how I want to be remembered always. Because it's what I was week. walking to. Uh, scrape this week, right? Is this because of that, that text uh, texted about the loudspeaker yeah. and what things people have heard over Tannoy? And also, a lot of people always say, James, you're getting so many scrapes, but. Doesn't seem like Josh gets into any. Well, Josh does when he's with me. <laughs> uh, this, is, uh, it's, uh, this is a few years ago, and uh, me and Josh were on a train to Leicester. Yep. Also, he's put out before we'd even uh, left the station uh, in, from London, uh, oh, yeah, a, young, a young man walked over to us. And you don't get this very often these days, but we, we, we were sitting on a, a table of four with two empty seats, and this young guy came over to us with a, he had a, a cardboard tube under his arm, and he went, yeah. Hi, boys. Which you don't get very often. Don't you? No. <laughs> How's it going? Like, yeah, pretty good. He went. <laughs> he, he went. You look like a couple of nice fellas. Like, Thanks very much. Should we get yeah, charged? Uh, I was been to London. So yeah, well, we all have because we're about to we're about to leave London. Mate. <laughs> that is not a conversation starter. But, uh, uh, okay. He went, he went, he went, guess what I was doing there? Don't know. 
I was uh, presenting a, a talk about wind energy to some uh, <laughs> possible uh, <laughs> some people who could give money to my charity. And then he just opened up the cardboard tube and got out a poster which had loads of pictures of windmills. He went, what do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. That's, that's, that's pretty good. He went, lovely. Lovely. That. He could get loads of wind energy out of them. I was like, yeah, I know, I know. And okay, it's like, this is great. And that's, that's what I've been talking to him about anyway, so fingers crossed. Uh, and he looked at our two seats next to us and he realised we weren't really up for chatting, so he kind of went, well, see you later. And then, and then, and then he sat, like, across the aisle. So he was still there, but, like, with his cardboard tube. We were like, well, we've, we've ducked out of that hell. Will you be filmed for, like, some kind of European prank show? <laughs> <laughs> Behind just, the plant, you can see a camera popping out. I mean, low-key joke, because I've been showing some pictures of some windmills. It's their version of Trigger Happy. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> the windmill poster guy. <laughs> people in cafes. All right, just having, having a coffee, are you? Hey, guess what I've been doing? <laughs> Look at this. What do you think about that? Slightly confused at most. <laughs> That's enough. Here we go, no. In Norway, they love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is overly friendly. Uh, but so he sat there. Then the train the train got moving. Mm -hmm. L lovely journey for the first, I don't know, let's say an hour. Yeah. We had, we had, we had a lovely time of it. And then suddenly uh, the train jolted quite heavily and uh, we saw like uh, rocks. Uh, rocks just fly on either <laughs> side of the train out of the window. Yes. Right. A few rocks flying in the air. And then, uh, and then even more rocks. And then the rocks started arching over the train and smashing the windows. <laughs> and the tra whole, whole carriage started shaking. The whole train was shaking. Uh, and we and were then, on a very high bit of rail. Like, we were yeah. above. There was a lot, big way to fall. Yeah, it was quite, we, 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 and we, our chat that we were having slowly kind of like stopped. And then I remember just and holding away from the, wind farms. We, we both held onto the table uh, with, with, with like two hands and just looked at each other, eye contact, thinking, this is the last person you'll see before I go. <laughs> it's Josh Widdicombe. Um, so okay. and then eventually the train stopped. Yeah. And uh, I was just sitting there trying to figure out what had happened. Uh, also, and at this point, because then we're, we're going, oh, we don't know how long we're going to be here for. Uh, spoiler alert, we were there for five hours. Uh, and, uh, which is not good, because uh, during the first 30 minutes, guess who came back to talk to us? <laughs> 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 just came like, oh, yeah, I guess, I don't know what's going on here, do you? Hey, I'll show you this. Uh, <laughs> but the, basically, we didn't know what had gone on. And the announcement that was made on, on the tannoy uh, that came over was, <laughs> uh, this guy went, uh, Oh, ladies and gentlemen, um, just had a bit of a problem. Uh, basically, the, uh, the the wheels that uh, <laughs> that run the train uh, on the on the tracks uh, they've they've fallen out, they've fallen off. And uh, uh, but don't worry, don't worry, the train is not on fire. <laughs> which is not, it's not being, none of us had raised that. No one had bought. There was no speculation. All you can think about is the fact that it might go on fire. Yeah, yeah, it's not on fire. By the way, in the background, you could hear the fire alarm. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> It's not on fire. I like the idea he just start listing things that it's not. You know, yeah, yeah. It's not on the water. Yeah. It's not, not going to explode. No, no terrorists on the train. <laughs> no, yeah, it's not going to fill with yogurt. There is a man, though, who won't shut up about wind energy. <laughs> it's a very boring man on board, though, so you might all want to watch out. Amazing. Um, I, it, it, he said, uh, I'll tell you what, though, there is, uh, what there is, is a lot of hot oil spewing onto a, a hot axle, which is not, not what we wanted to hear. <laughs> At all spewing, uh, yeah. and then and then the, the, the next course of action was to send a, lay, a a member of the train staff down the aisle with a a, a packet of um is it fantastics or tangfastics? Tangfastics. <laughs> handing them out to people. Have you, have you had a tangfastic? <laughs> Oh, no, I'd love one. Uh, obviously, we're, we're, we're at the bottom of the carriage, so we know that by the time it gets to us, with cola bottles and that's it. <laughs> All those dinosaurs and stuff are going to be gone. Forget about that dream. But she went past a window that had smashed, and then she looked at me and Josh, and she looked back at the window, she pointed at the window, and she went, when did that happen? <laughs> what? Uh, you know when the train derailed? <laughs> Yeah, then. That guy didn't get too carried, out, carried away about wind energy and start smashing windows during his speech. Unless she was completely oblivious to it. That was her job, just to hand out tang fastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's completely... She's getting all the day normally. What, her, her alarm goes tracks? off. I've got to hand out some tang fast. Whoa, what is happening? Hot axle. That's amazing. I was, I was on a train once where it stopped in the middle of nowhere and then on the tannoy they said, uh, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, we've had to stop because we just glanced a badger. <laughs> Uh, which I'd like to imagine they, meant they just saw one. <laughs> they had to slow down and have a look. Stop it. Nature is beautiful. <laughs> look out the right window. Uh, also, we had to be evacuated onto a rescue train, which is why it took so long for us to move off. 
And when we got on that train, <laughs> um, the, the, the buffet was free on that train. And, and uh, one of the guys, who, oh. one of the passengers, got a Stella for free. And bearing in mind, he is now five hours late. His whole day has been absolutely <laughs> ruined. He got this Stella, and he looked over to his wife, who was at the bottom end of the carriage, and just did the most enthusiastic thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Like, this has all been worth it! I got a freeze. I told you! Every cloud! Every yeah. cloud! <laughs> the idea that he derailed the train himself on the off chance. <laughs> it was worth it, love! We should have put that brick there, you're right. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, well, and that's why I don't hang out with you anymore. <laughs> yeah, understandable. Hey, uh, thank you, James. Another uh, classic scrape. Uh, it's genuinely brought it all flooding back. I remember also that the guy, um, the wind engine guy was obsessed with 3G. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> He said to him, when the, when the train had derailed, he said to him, uh, has anyone got 3G, has anyone got GPS? It's like, the, the tra- we are not lost. <laughs> That's not what's happened here. Yeah. I've been taking a wrong turn, they're like, oh, dear me. <laughs> Seem to have gone uh, into a field again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> stay on the track, stay on the yeah. track. If he Can't help li- it, it's where the badgers are. <laughs> <laughs> if he is listening, uh, tweet us in uh, or text us about wind energy. Josh Widdicombe. XFM. By the ocean, queens of the Stone Age, and we we're coming to the end now. We've got time for one more um, text on Tannoy's. Are you ready, James? For the final, the headline. One. I'm ready. Ready, Tom? Mm. Yeah. A couple of years ago, some friends and I were on a train from Oxford to Bristol after a weekend's drinking, when the train driver apologised over the Tannoy. He said, "Sorry about my laughter earlier, but I had 13 blokes tickling my legs, and they're gone now." <laughs> <laughs> Not sure how 13 men got into the cabin or why they chose to tickle his legs. Well, they can't all be train staff. <laughs> James I've, ne- I've never got on a train and there's 14 <laughs> men working on the train. <laughs> <laughs> they can't all... There must be something... Is that, is that why your train derailed, you reckon? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was it. <laughs> the, the ticklers. I must be everyone in first class just gets to do what they want. <laughs> One more, one more that's just come in. I'll read this last one. About nine years ago at Canary Wharf DLR station, a guy said over the tannoy, please stand back as the train approaches. Approaches like a leaf in the autumn wind. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute legend. Absolute yeah. brilliant. That's brilliant. No, I mean, that, I think that's the best one. What yeah, 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 it's, it's beautiful. I, I like it when, tra- when, when the, the train drivers make a little uh, snipe at someone. I saw a guy get on once and hel- hold the door open for his mate. And once they got on, his, his, over the announcement, he went, well done, boys. <laughs> well, like, well done. Like, probably like, you yeah, please be yourself. Yeah, happy. Great. You're yeah, happy. happy. We're 30 <laughs> seconds late now, mate. Slight, a slight delays on the Bakerloo line, thanks to you. Um... <laughs> Before we all uh, go, uh, as a thank you for coming in, uh, would you like to plug anything? Uh, Tom, we'll start with you. You've got th- have, we, have they got 30 seconds? Yeah. yeah. Ready, steady, go. Uh, I was going to plug my Radio 4 series, which you can buy on iTunes, but I'm probably going to I'm gonna plug Jack Villeneuve's album. <laughs> <laughs> he really so, needs yeah. it. There are a lot of copies of that available on Amazon, uh, and it, it'll probably be on uh, If you like this, you'd like, I don't know, the Peter best of Damon Hill. <laughs> Peter <laughs> Ebsen, exactly, Hill. yeah. Buy Jack Villeneuve, he needs it. Uh, also go to my website, whatever, but you know, do whatever, do whatever, spend your time on the internet as you choose, but just keep it clean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I've run out. Do 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 do. Me. That's a, what a nice little sing song at the end. Okay. <laughs> James, uh, here we go. Oh, uh, I'm oh. going on tour, starting in October through to November. JamesAcaster.com for the the tour dates. Besides that, I've got very little else to... <laughs> it's to too much time, isn't it? Uh, Jack Villeneuve's <laughs> album. And, uh, Tom's, Tom's Radio 4 series. Under the name Jigsaw, I believe, Tom. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, just, I'm uh, really you, bad you at this. You missed that out. I was a little yeah. bit upset that you missed Your that Twitter? out. Your uh, Twitter? At James Acaster. Your Twitter? He tried to hide my Twitter name. Incredible. Thank you both. Goodbye.